Hi, this is Jim from 100th Monkey Mushroom Farm. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video on how to set up your oyster mushroom kit, either the blue oyster or your elm oyster. Uh, when you first get your kit, uh, open it up and you'll notice inside that we have included a um, spray bottle, uh, your humidity tent, and of course the written instructions. Uh, first thing you're going to do when you get the um, the kit is you'll notice there's a, a little window on here. You pop out the window and inside you'll see this is the bag filled with oak sawdust and mycelium. The mycelium would be either the blue oyster or the elm oyster. That's the root system. You're going to take a, a sharp pair of scissors or you could use a sharp knife. I find that sharp scissors work well. And the, the vertical distance, turn on its edge, you're going to cut the vertical distance of the bag. Make sure you cut all the way through the bag and then you're going to cut horizontally also. Make sure that it's free. Try not to get too deep into the mycelium. But if you do that's okay. If you've chosen one of our large blue oyster or elm oyster kits, um, a couple of differences. Number one being is that it doesn't come in a box. Um, but number two is you have multiple options of where you want to open this from. Um, ideally you can uh, make that four inch by four inch cut just as you did in the smaller one, but you could put it on the the, um, the, vert or the horizontal surface this way. You might decide to make that cut a little higher, uh, maybe on the side, it's, it's up to you. Um, on this one, for example, we put the, the slice in the bag up a little bit higher and, and the mushrooms will fruit out of there. They will find that cut. They're searching out that oxygen. They know where that high level of oxygen is. So wherever you put the cut, that's where they're going to grow out of. Humidity tent is very important in this kit because it is going to um, provide one of the essential factors to growing mushrooms thick and to their fullest, which is high level of humidity. The bag, you're gonna open it all up. You'll notice that the bag has some holes in it because it does need some air exchange through those holes. And you're gonna roll the bag like you would, uh, you're rolling a pant leg. You're gonna fluff it up. Roll it a few times. So that's basically how the kit is set up. Once you have your kit set up, you want to uh, think about a good location for it in your home. The place that we suggest is a kitchen counter uh, for a few reasons. Number one is that um, you walk by it often. And when you do, you're going to want to check, see if your kit is uh, has a high enough humidity level, uh, which I'm going to show you in a second how, how we do that. And and also so that you can watch it. You can in, uh, participate in the experience and get the kids to participate in the experience because once the mushrooms start to grow, they're gonna grow rapidly. And uh, it's just part of, the, part of the enjoyment of this kit is watching it. Um, so we, we suggest a kitchen uh, counter or you could use a coffee table. Anywhere that it's uh, indoor, again, these are good for the temperature and light of your, your, your home. The humidity being a factor, we need to raise it. Um, this bag is essentially like a little terrarium, a little microclimate that fits around um, your kit so you don't have to humidify your entire home to, to get these to grow. And what you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to mist the inside of this bag. The way that we're going to create the humidity is not necessarily by misting on the kit. You can do that, that's fine, but it's more essential that there's humidity around it. So when you miss your kit you're going to spray inside of it and you can see the the condensation the droplets that are on the inside of the bag you want to cover as much of the surface area of the bag as you can and so it's going to provide a lot of humidity and that's it and then you just drop it back over the top if you see water running down that's that's perfect if you're having a hard time keeping the humidity in there and you notice that there's the condensation is evaporating quickly a couple little tips to keep that in there or if you have to leave for um, you know a day or so and you won't be and no one will be there to miss it because you'll notice that all these air exchange holes are in here you can take a, a piece of tape and cover those holes um, all, you can cover many of them uh, as you like but leave at least four or five open because there does need to be air exchange in there also if you still are having it or again if you need to leave for a day is take a, a, a dish towel and wet it wring it out and you can put it along the base of this and you can cover it this way and obviously that humidity that's in that towel is going to evaporate inside the bag and create this convection and, uh, and the, the humidity will stay in there much longer. Just remember to um, change that towel out every couple days. 
So once your kit is set up, uh, what, are, what are you expecting to look for? Well, in about three to ten days, you're going to see small um, bumps where you made that in, uh, the cut in the bag, and those those are the beginnings of your mushroom. Those are called primordia, and within the next three to four, or that's going to take three to ten days, and the next three to four days after that is going to be um, this rapid acceleration and growth. It um, is going to be a doubling or tripling of the size within uh, those, those those three to four days. Um, when do you harvest them is, um, is a big question we get often and um, here I have an example uh, this is an elm oyster kit you're going to watch the largest one in the group and when the largest one in this entire cluster flattens out just before it starts to go convex you're going to remove the whole entire cluster you're going to break the whole thing off and it'll easily pull out I'll show you in just a moment um, this one right here, you can see that many of these have already gone past convex into that concave and they've, they've raised up. The vast, these, these are still great to eat, but if you want to catch them at their prime of flavor, it's right when the largest ones are still, um, still convex, still curved down. You to notice that um, this one is also because it is about 12 hours past maturity, is releasing its spores. And if you look closely on the box, and you'll You'll see this in your kit and it's perfectly fine. You'll notice there's a fine white white powder right there. That is the spore or the seed of the elm oyster mushroom. It's still it's perfectly fine to eat, but again, if you want to catch it at its prime, uh, take it right uh, before then. So when you go to harvest, again, um, some people like to chop one, each one off individually. These again, these are harvested as a cluster. So you grab the whole entire thing and just give it a gentle twist and pull it up. And this is what you're going to um, cook with and saute. We have some fantastic recipes on our website. Now, once you've harvested your, your first batch of mushrooms, there's still a lot of energy potential in this kit. And if you want to try for a second production or flush of mushrooms, um, that, uh, that'll be very easy to do. First thing you want to do is you clean off the, the little small mushrooms that are on the other side. After, this is directly after you harvest it, and you're just going to put it a shelf in a cupboard, in a cabinet, somewhere indoor uh, for a week. So you're just going to, you don't need to cover it, don't need to mist it, just set it aside. It needs to kind of go dormant and rest for a certain period of time. After that week, you pull it out and you need to rehydrate it. And when you rehydrate, are you rehydrating it because the, the mushrooms, they are 90% water, so you, you've pulled a lot of water um, out through those mushrooms and it needs to be rehydrated uh, to be grown again and uh, it's very similar to in nature when there's a large rainstorm and the mushrooms reappear that mycelium is always there under the ground it's just that the rain has reinvigorated it uh, with water so again clean that up uh, nicely that's it after your week is up you're going to um, get a pot of or a bucket of water something that'll just hold this. You're gonna submerge it in the water. Now, when you submerge it in the water, this part, it's important to have non-chlorinated water. The reason being is uh, chlorine's job, of course, is to kill fungus and bacteria. Um, if you have tap water, it is chlorinated, but you can easily get the chlorine out by, uh, like I did with this one, just set it in a pot, let it sit for 24 hours, and the chlorine will dissipate. Or, if you're in more of a hurry, you can boil it for 10 minutes, but uh, just make sure it cools back down to room temperature before you before you submerge it. When you submerge it, you are going to uh, just put it in the pot, and it's going to be it's going to be buoyant. So you're going to need to hold it down with something. Uh, be creative. I like to use a little smaller pan with some water in it, and that just uh, holds it underwater. I'm going to leave it under there for four hours. And after four hours, I'm going to take this off and I'm going to drain it well. So what I what I want to do is let that water drain. I'll let it sit, you know, to, to, to drain out. Give it a shake every now and then. And I don't want to see any water down at the bottom of the bag. If I do, I'm going to tilt it and let it drain more until all that water is out. We don't want it to sit down there. That's a, a, um, a potential for it to... Um, pick up uh, bacteria or, or um, any other contamination. So I want to let that dry out. At this point then, I put it back in the box, put it back in my humidity tent, back in my, uh, my well-lit space, as long as it's not in direct sunlight, and put my humidity tent back over the top, 
and start misting it again. And and um, this one will take a little longer than the first one. The first one took uh, three to ten days before you saw primordia. This one may take up to uh, two weeks before you start to see the primordia. Um, after your second time, there's still a lot of life left in that kit. And uh, you could try to get another, a third batch out of it or a fourth. It's going to be diminishing returns at that point because you're using up the energy that's in that, in that oak sawdust. Um, there, there is a, a way to um, expand that even further. And if you look at our, um, our videos online about how to expand the mycelium in that kit onto something else um, for it to grow on, a lot of people ask us, well, can I recharge this somehow to get more mushrooms out of it? Well, you can't recharge that, but you can expand it. You literally have um, the vast potential to expand that onto something else, a log, straw, um, some coffee grounds, and check out our other videos on our, on our website about how to, um, how to do that. That's, like I said, these, these are just, these are the tip of the iceberg, and there's so much more that you can do with these, so. Thank you again for taking the time to watch this video. There was a lot of information in here. It might be a good idea to bookmark this page so you can refer back to it. Um, also, uh, feel free to leave us a comment uh, below about this, about the video. Um, and and, uh, and uh, click on the subscribe button to, um, to our YouTube channel, 100 Monkey Mushrooms, so that you can get the latest uh, videos that we come out with. Um, also, stop by our website. Our website, uh, there's a lot of great information on there. We have a lot of other kits and more coming with Pia Pinos and Shiitake Mushrooms, Lion's Mane, and as I said, more coming. Um, also a lot of information um, just in general about mushrooms and growing and making it part of your landscape and, and getting, bringing the kids into it. We have a lot of kids activities and experiments and uh, some fantastic recipes. So um, yeah, check that out also and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank you.